Well, hello everyone, and welcome once again to Blogatos. I'm Phil Ramsey, and in this Bible 2 series, we go through the Word together, chapter and verse. And we're in the book of Psalms, looks like we're getting towards the end of this, this set of 25. Um, and so, let's just jump right in. Let's just, uh, just, just get into it. So, Father, I thank you for this Word. I thank you for the Psalms, Lord God. I thank you for music. I thank you for the ability to sing um, and praise you, even if... Even if we're not, uh, um, you know, very good at, at tuning, you know, even if we don't have the best sounding voice, it doesn't matter. You still love to hear our praises, Lord God. You said in the word, you ordained praise. It has a purpose. Uh, you use it to obliterate what the enemy is trying to bring forth. Uh, and then you, you bring us into a good place, Father. And I thank you for it. I praise you for it. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Psalm 69. For the choir director. A psalm of David, to be sung to the tune Lilies. Save me, O God, for the flood waters are up to my neck. Deeper and deeper I sink into the mire. I can't find a foothold. I am in deep water, and the floods overwhelm me. I am exhausted from crying out for help, or from crying for help, excuse me. My throat is parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. Those who hate me without cause outnumber the hairs on my head. My it, many enemies try to destroy me with lies, demanding that I give back what I didn't steal. Now, what's interesting, you know, is that in the beginning of it, we don't exactly know what the problem is, but we know that he's how he feels. We know what he feels like that he's he's gonna drown. You know that he's he's uh, underneath the waters and he can't get out. You know, and so uh, we don't know what the problem is until he gets down here into verse 4 and he says my enemies try to destroy me with lies and once again you know what do you lie with words and then he says demanding that i give back what i didn't steal what do you demand with words and so uh just a few uh, uh psalms back you know we he talked about how his enemies sharpened their tongues like swords and their words were like arrows and um you know so there he he was you the they were using their words against him but he was uh, describing, you know, in a like a, a cutting, piercing type of way, and this is like a, a, a trapping, like uh, drowning, you know, a smothering type of way that they're using their words, and so uh, words have a lot of application, and uh, you know, the Bible says in James that, uh, you know, with the, you know the tongue, the tongue's a, uh, you know the tongue is a, a fire, you know, where James talked about that. And he was like, with it, we, uh, we praise God. And then with it, we turn and we curse the men, you know, men who are with us, who are made in the image of God. And he's like, brothers, this shouldn't be so. And then he talks about how like, should, can't, should, uh, bitter waters come out of a sweet spring or sweet waters come out of a bitter swing, a, a bitter spring, you know? And so like what, so he, so he likened words to, uh, like water, issuing out of a spring and so it's like you know here's my mouth and my words issue forth out of my mouth and so what type of words am i speaking and so we talked about how if i'm speaking god's words then god will add his efficiency or his efficacy to his words he will add an anointing to his words to accomplish his word because the word says that his words will not return to him void but they will accomplish what he sent them forth to do and he's not talking about just the words that he himself speaks because we also have the ability to speak his word as his sons and daughters in the earth if you said out loud that jesus is your lord and you believe in your heart god's risen from the dead you are one of those to whom jesus had said go therefore and spread this gospel these words of good news you know and so you are you then you speak God's words, then you are out of the, your mouth are issuing words that are like living water that Jesus told the woman at the, at the, at the well. You know, he said, if, if you had knew who asked you, give me a drink, you would have asked me and I would give you living water. You know, and so uh, his words, you know, and uh, uh, people's words and our words are a huge thing. And so we need to pay attention to what we're speaking. So then verse 5, O God, you know how foolish I am. My sins cannot be hidden from you. Don't let those who trust in you be ashamed because of me, O sovereign Lord of heaven's armies. Don't let me cause them to be humiliated, O God of Israel. 
for I endure insults for your sake. Humiliation is written all over my face. Even my own brothers pretend they don't know me. They treat me like a stranger. Passion for your house has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. When I weep and fast, they scoff at me. When I dress in burlap to show sorrow, they make fun of me. I am the favorite topic of town gossip, and all the drunks sing about me. But I keep praying to you, Lord, hoping this time you will show me favor in your unfailing love, O God. Answer my prayer with your sure salvation. Just to let you know, for the context here, he's not saying hoping this time, maybe this time God will do it. No, that's not what he's saying. I keep praying to you, Lord, hoping this time or in this time you will show me favor. At this moment, is what he, you know, in this in this uh, moment of time in which I find myself. Uh, verse fourteen: Rescue me from the mud. Don't let me sink any deeper. Save me from those who hate me and pull me from these deep waters. See now he's going back to the waters, and that is the words that people are speaking against him. Remember, don't let the floods overwhelm me, or the deep waters swallow me, or the pit of death devour me. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Don't hide from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in deep trouble. Come and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. And so, again, this is prophecy. So there's, so it's, it's weaving in and out of point of view. You know, and so, like, from the point of view of David, this whole psalm is from David's point of view. But there are times when he switches to the point of view, and it's also Jesus' point of view. It doesn't start out that way because he talks about how, like, Lord, you're, you, you might, you, I can't hide my sins from you. See, now, that can't be Jesus because Jesus walked the earth with no sin. Yet when you get down here into verse 9, where it says, Passion for your house has consumed me, that's uh, talking about Jesus when he went and cleansed the temple, if you remember. Passion for your house cons has consumed me. And so... It's it's no less true statement for David. David did have passion for God's house, and it did consume him. But the same was true for Jesus. You see, and so there we see he's moving in and out of points of view. All right. So verse nineteen, you know my shame, scorn, and disgrace. You see all that my enemies are doing. Their insults have broken my heart, and I am in despair. If only one person would show some pity. If only one would turn and comfort me, but instead they give me poison for food. They offer me sour wine for my thirst. And see, there we go in verse 21 with Jesus again at the cross is when they gave him the, the sour wine on, on the sponge and he refused to drink it. That's uh, a messianic prophecy right here. Verse 22, let the bountiful table set before them become a snare and their prosperity become a trap. Let their eyes go blind so they cannot see and make their bodies shake continually. Pour out your fury upon them. And there's a translation note there. I'm just curious as to what it says. 23, uh, shatter. But really it's talking about a shaking, a, a, you know, God bringing a judgment on their behavior so they can see. Okay, so then verse 24. Pour out your fury on them. Consume them with your burning anger. Let their homes become desolate and their tents be deserted. To the one you have punished, they add insult to injury. They add to the pain of those you have hurt. Pile their sins. So he's talking about when God brings judgment against a, a, a person or, you know, because, again, we're talking Old Testament here. Uh, and God talked about that, too, how that nation of Babylon, he gave them power over Israel to come and exact a punishment upon them for their for their evil. But that nation went too far. God said, you went too far against my people and you hurt them far more than I intended. You know, and so uh, he, he, this is basically the same thing David's talking about right here. Uh, verse 27, pile their sins up high and don't let them go free. Erase their names from the book of life. Don't, excuse me, don't let them be counted among the righteous. I am suffering and in pain. Rescue me, O God, by your saving power. Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. For this will please the Lord more than sacrificing cattle, more than pre presenting a bull with its horns and hooves. The humble will see their God at work and be glad. Let all who seek God's help be encouraged. For the Lord hears the cries of the needy. He does not despise his imprisoned people. Praise him, O heaven and earth, the seas, and all that move in them. See, that encompasses all of creation. So, the heavenlies, 
you know, uh, heaven or, you know, the, the, the heavenly realm that exists just beyond our physical senses. And then the seas, which we know many times in Scripture represents the Gentile nations, and then the earth, which many times in Scripture represents Israel. So he's encompassing all of creation in this statement. Verse 35, For God will save Jerusalem and rebuild the towns of Judah. His people will live there and settle in their own land. The descendants of those who obey him will inherit the land, and those who love him will live there in safety. David prophesied this before the people were ever taken out of the land at any time. And so this, again, is prophetic, you see. And so David's moving, you know, he's as he's prophesying, God is speaking of the the past, the present, and the future, and he's he's doing it in this interwoven utterance of prophecy. Psalm 70, for the choir director, a psalm of David, asking God to remember him. Please God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to kill me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, Aha, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, God is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Please hurry to my aid, O God. You are my helper and my Savior. O Lord, do not delay. Another good thing to point out here is David's in distress, but he also takes the, the time to pray for other people as well. Psalm 71 O Lord, I come, have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety, where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. See, the people would have known what Jesus was talking about when he said, uh, when he told them, those who listen to what I say and do it will be like someone who dug down deep and built his house on the rock. So they would have been familiar with these uh, these you know word pictures that uh, that that he said because they're they're in embedded in the scriptures that they that they uh, live by. You see, verse four: My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O Lord, you alone are my hope. I've trusted you, O Lord, from childhood. Yes, you have been with me from birth. From my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. Remember, again, David said in a couple psalms back, he said, if you happen to get wealthy, don't make that the center of your life. And the implication is, is that God should be the center of your life. See, David knew exactly what he was talking about. He wasn't, he wasn't raised in a wealthy uh, a wealthy setting, you know, he, 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 he tended flocks, he's a shepherd's a hard life, you know, you're out there in the cold and the dark, you know, you know, uh, taking care of the sheep and, and, uh, you know, living by the sweat of your brow. And so he is in a perfect position to say something like, if you ever become wealthy, don't let that become the center of your life because he became the king of Israel. He was extremely wealthy, but yet he never let that become the center of his life. He, let, he kept God as the center of his life, and it's what brought him through all these trials that he's talking about right now. Verse 7, my life is an example to many. <laughs> I didn't know that that was going to say that right there. Okay, because my life is an example to many because you have been my strength and protection. That is why I can never stop praising you. I declare your glory all day long. And now in my old age, don't set me aside. Don't abandon me when my strength is failing. For my enemies are whispering against me. They are plotting together to kill me. They say God has abandoned him. Let's go and get him, for no one will help him now. O oh God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. Bring disgrace and destruction on my accusers. Humiliate and shame those who want to harm me. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long I will proclaim your saving power, though I am not skilled with words. I will praise your mighty deeds, O Sovereign Lord. I will tell everyone that you alone are just. And so you see how, under the old covenant, you know, you have, um, you know, you, you do have 
praying for occasionally praying for the destruction of their enemies. Now, over in the New Testament, Jesus said, "Love your enemies," and so that's the that's the shift, you know. And it's like uh, let God, in other words, let God handle that. You you pray for your enemies, pray out God's plan for them, love them, and and so you see, even even here there is. Um, there are glimpses where David is praying that way, you know, where he actually is praying for God to help his enemies. And it, it, the, the focus shifts over in the New Testament with Jesus telling us that's the way we should always be praying. In other words, that's the default mode, you know, when we, when we pray for our enemies. And so um, you can see that transition there. Okay, so verse 17. Oh God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Now that I am old and gray, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who come after me. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the highest heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O God? You have allowed me to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again and, will, and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You will restore me to even greater honor and comfort me once again. Then I will praise you with music on the harp, because you are faithful to your promises, O my God. I will sing praises to you with a lyre, which is a musical instrument, L-Y-R-E, not lyre as in a person who tells lies. O holy one of Israel. So, yeah, he's like, I, you know, some people want to only praise God after they get the, they get the victory. But David praises God before the victory comes, and then after the victory comes, he praises him even more. There's an amplification of praise, is what he's talking about here. Verse 23, I will shout for joy and sing your praises, for you have ransomed me. I will tell about your righteous deeds all day long, for everyone who tried to hurt me has been shamed and humiliated. Yeah. So, uh, how am I on time? Okay. Really? Wow. All right. So, uh, Psalm 72. This is a Psalm of Solomon. So, uh, yeah. So like we said before, you know, uh, uh, David wrote most of the Psalms, but not all of them. And so this is a Psalm of Solomon, his son. Verse one, give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Help him judge your people in the right way. Let the poor always be treated fairly. May the mountains yield prosperity for all, and may the hills be fruitful. Help him to defend the poor, to rescue the children of the needy, and to crush their oppressors. May they fear you as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon remains in the sky, yes, forever. Uh, and so this is a, actually a prayer for the king. And so you know how uh, the word said, that uh, we should pray for rulers and all who are in authority. Uh, you can go to Psalm 72 and you can pray this for them. Verse 6, May the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on freshly cut grass, like the showers that water the earth. May all the godly flourish during his reign. May there be abundant prosperity until the moon is no more. May he reign from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. See, now we're getting over into talking about Jesus. Desert nomads will bow before him. His enemies will fall before him in the dust. The western kings of Tarshish and other distant lands will bring him tribute. The eastern kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. All kings will bow before him, and all nations will serve him. Now, pay attention because uh, you have those things where they can be applied to the Messiah, but then also... Keep in mind that this is Solomon's reign. Solomon that did he he did reign after this manner. He did have this type of dominion. So verse twelve, he will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and he will rescue them. And he will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. Long live the king. May the gold of Sheba be given to him. May the people always pray for him and bless him all day long. May there be abundant grain throughout the land, flourishing even on the hilltops. May the fruit trees flourish like the trees of Lebanon, and may the people thrive like grass in the field. May the king's name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun shines. May all nations be blessed through him and bring him praise. Praise the Lord God, the God of Israel, 
who alone does such wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. This ends the prayers of David, son of Jesse. And it tells me, Book 3, Psalms 73 and 89. Yes? Time to quit? Uh, yeah, that's probably a good place to stop because we've only got a few more Psalms before we finish this book all together. So let's go ahead and stop here. It's a good place. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, your word. I thank you that it's ever constant, that it never fails, that it always accomplishes that which you sent it forth to do. And so uh, I pray your peace upon all who come, who tune in here with me. I pray, Lord, your, your blessing of prosperity over them. Uh, Lord, may their bank accounts be blessed. May their uh, may their their increase come, Lord God, because they have seen in these last few psalms, they know that they are to put their trust in you. doesn't matter if wealth uh, comes into their household. Uh, they know to not let that be the center of their life. And so let the, your blessings flow, Lord God, to your people so that they're able to do more for your kingdom than they were able to do yesterday. And I thank you for these things, and I praise you for them. And in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, bless you guys, and we will see you again.